A website wireframe, also known as a page schematic or a screen blueprint, is a visual guide that represents the skeletal framework of a website. If a sitemap provides the blueprint for your entire website, a wireframe represents a blueprint for a single page or group of pages. It's what you'd see if you could take your sitemap and then zoom in on or enhance a single page in that high-level map. Wireframing is a way to design a website at the structural level. A wireframe is commonly used to lay out content and functionality on a page, which takes into account user needs and user journeys. Wireframes are used early in the development process to establish the basic structure of a page before visual design and content is added. So why should we use wireframes? Well, the same screen can be built in a lot of different ways, but only a few of them will get your message across correctly and result in an easy to use experience on the website. Nailing down a good interface structure is possibly the most important part of designing a website. Doing this now, before any code is written and before the visual design is finalized, will save you a lot of time and painful adjustments later on. So why do wireframes look the way they do? Wireframes typically have an intentional, low-fidelity look and feel to them, and it's for the following reasons. No one could mistake a wireframe for the final look and feel of your website. Low fidelity and few colors will force you to focus on structure over details. There will be a lot of time for visual design once the structure is finalized. The rough feel encourages discussion. We call it a look that no one is afraid to criticize. Wireframes are really quick to make, so don't be shy about giving and getting feedback. Each screen should take a minimal time to make, especially if they're just being sketched out on a piece of paper. What matters most at this point is the final ease of use, so going through a few iterations is normal and expected. If your customer or stakeholder receives some screenshots that look like the final screenshots of the website instead of a wireframe, they might assume that all the code behind those screenshots had already been written. This is most often not the case. Wireframes never have this danger. A wireframe is necessary in mapping out the essential parts of an interface. It helps everyone involved gain a full understanding of the product near the beginning of the process. Without this foundation, it's next to impossible to continue with the code or design of the product. It also provides you with a relatively easy and low-cost method in which you can compare a few design concepts and take decisions early on. Additionally to being a visual tool, wireframes are also much more acceptable than written ideas, which can seem too abstract. Showing a wireframe to your client will help them clearly understand your intentions. This enables you to receive relevant feedback and implement it into your final designs. There are a number of different types of wireframes. The first one is the low fidelity wireframe. You should always start the process with rough, hand-drawn sketches and then move on to creating low-fidelity wireframes within an application. Low-fidelity wireframes enable you to create relatively quick sketches and present the website's main screens and clarify which pages will lead to which other ones. This will give you a better feel for the product and enable you to create the more refined version of the wireframes much more easily. At this point, your wireframe should now show the full life cycle of the flow, covering a complete range of cases that a user can find themselves in. This should include errors, empty states, and how the website might look for first-time users as opposed to returning users. The high-fidelity wireframes often contain more details. They should contain actual text, and if you know what some of the images are, you can begin to add those as well. They don't have to look exactly like the finalized website, but we should be getting pretty close at this point. Finally, we have prototypes or finalized comps. These act as the live version of the wireframe. They bring the product to life, showing the full flow alongside real content and finalized copy. Prototypes range in their level of sophistications from elaborate website mockups to UX prototypes that are created with code. These will truly behave and feel like the actual product. Here's a few wireframing tips. Other than giving us the chance to focus on developing an all-around positive user experience, 
wireframes help save time as we can identify and deal with any usability issues early on in the process. You don't want to skip this important phase of development. Wireframes are not supposed to describe the UI. In fact, they should look like a draft design. It doesn't mean they have to be flat out ugly, but they shouldn't delve into the UI design side of things. Instead, they should keep everything grayscale other than one single color to mark any functionalities or interactive areas. You should also stick to one generic font, and you'll use different text sizes to communicate hierarchy. Make sure that your client understands that this is not what the final product will look like. It rather just explains the structure and functionality. Working with clients can be tricky. They often end up falling in love with your wireframe or alternately can get freaked out that this is what the final product will look like. That's why you should make sure to avoid any misunderstandings before and clearly explain to them what the purpose of a wireframe is. Create a few iterations for the same screen at the low fidelity stage. At this point, you want to keep your options open. As you move on, you will have a better understanding of the product and your choices will be more informed. Once you decide on one of the flows, you can get into detail with that particular version. It's important to finalize your text early on so that you can incorporate the final copy into your wireframe. It's a huge part of the product's flow, directly impacting the user understanding, just like your UX design. This also means that you should avoid at all costs any use of lorem ipsum text. It may sound like a good idea, but in reality, the phrase lorem ipsum does not reflect the amount of space your actual content will take up, and it definitely does not serve to convey a sense of character or an understanding of what's going on on a particular page. Wireframes should clarify the user flow. They should tell your product story, indicating what the user's next step is and how they will get there. You want to identify any dead ends and avoid those within your flow. Work in an organized way. Name screens in a way that makes the most sense to you. Generally, the name will describe the main intent of the screen or a specific state that the user finds themselves in on that particular page. Use placeholders for images. A simple box with an X will convey your intended message of using an image. You don't want to risk getting too attached to images that you choose at an early stage before you flesh out the structural flow of the website. Describe hierarchy in terms of spacing, sizes, and layout. Be careful not to design the entire UI, but you want to pinpoint the most important messages to pass on and consider what the user will be looking at for that particular page. Is the intent for the user to subscribe to a newsletter, add a filter to their photo, or make a purchase? Whatever it is, simply state it as is as opposed to designing it. Stay consistent by ensuring that individual components look the same on each of your screens or pages. If you represent a button as a circle and a heading as a blank rectangle, make sure that these elements are repeated in the same way throughout the wireframe so as to avoid any confusion. And last but not least, don't start working on the UI before you have the full functionality and life cycle of the flow. Otherwise, you could just end up having to make compromises because you didn't consider all of the details beforehand. Setting out on a project with only a vague idea of its organization will only complicate the process. Once you know the goals and scope of a project, it's time to create a sitemap and a wireframe. These will give you a guide to your website's organization and the targeted outline for creating content.